This is the story of the great city Nertopia. What you are reading is the Chronologicum Nertopian. This book breaks down every event of how our great city got its start and remains the wonder of all the land. We must first begin our story with a great tragedy. No one knew how the plague started, but it ravaged across Europe and England. We did everything to stay off the plague, prayed, herbal ointments, strange rituals, and finally bathing. But it was of no use. The plague took so many lives from our village that many felt we should just leave and go elsewhere, but not me. As the town's chief architect, I told the townsfolk we, cannot, we can rebuild our homes and it can be better than it, what it was. I remember that the people mumbling to themselves and having the look of defeat over their faces, but after much deliberation the townspeople rallied and we began to work on rebuilding our home. Fall came sooner than we thought and we were in the fields gathering the harvest for winter. Everyone's spirits were high. But that's when it happened. A band of brigands swept across the town, burning our homes, kidnapping honest folk, and stealing our crops. As they put the torch to our fields, I managed to rescue a few others before they could be swept away by the brigands. We made our way to the mountains with the food that we could scavenge along the way, and we walked to what I felt would be certain death but it would be better than what awaited those that were captured. We need to get to work and build shelter and farms. We should build a church and give thanks to God that we survived. Now is not the time. No, she's right. Joanna and Sabim begin felling trees. Eldrick begin planting some crops. I will design the church. The work was to be divided. Stephen did not want anyone to be wasting time, and they all agreed that the first thing that should be built would be a church. This would mark the center of town, and everything else will follow around it. Baldrick was sent to plant the, what seeds they had scavenged, and then charged with an underground storehouse for food. This will protect any food from the elements and wild animals. Joanna and Sabine needed to focus on felling trees and light scavenging for flax, barley, and red berries, but getting timber would be their priority. Afterwards, they can help with the construction of the church or help Baldrick with the granary. The construction and design of the church would fall onto Stephen. He wanted this to be a site of future fairs and gatherings. This church would continue to bless the town for generations and hopefully attract more restitutionists to the area. That first night, we slept under the heavens. My thoughts wander over those that did not make it to see this sight. It's a miracle we even survived last winter. Thankfully, we found that cave in the mountains just north of the valley, and when the spring thaw came, we left our would-be shelter and happened upon this lovely spot. So we got to work felling trees, digging earth, and planting seed, all for a better future. The land is good here. I can almost imagine bountiful crops every season and no one will ever go hungry. The first day was behind them and there was still work that needed to be done. The first walls of the church were completed and now work began on the second tier. Joanna and Sabine continued to fell trees and Baldrick began digging away for the underground storage.
The first day was behind them, and there was still plenty of work that needed to be done. The first walls of the church were completed, and now work can begin on the second floor. Joanna and Sabine continued to fell trees, and Baldrick began digging away for the underground storage. With a gentle rain moving in, this made the work day that much slower. As much of the day was spent planting the remaining seeds and felling the trees needed for the platforms and stairs to build a roof over the church. Bieldrick was a little hesitant to begin digging as he had no experience doing such things, and normally in the past there were scores of men helping with the project. He was just one. The days seemed to fold together with all the work needed to be done, but thankfully the rains had stopped and they could continue work on the cellar. Stephen hoped that there would be room for a kitchen above the cellar and attached a great hall for feasting and relaxing when work is done. But Baldrick began to look at his hole and, as he dug and asked for insight on how he could build such a thing. We spent the last few days clearing trees to complete the church. With much of the forest near our village gone, we've had to go farther out for more mature trees. I briefly suggested to Stephen that we should plant the saplings that we get from the fallen trees, but he did not want to overwork Baldrick since he had the cellar project on his own. If we're not careful, we will have to wait longer to finish the church, as we will not have sufficient lumber for other structures that may be more important or fuel for the winter. So it was decided by the village to replant the trees. Baldrick immediately got to work, anything to avoid building the cellar, as it was a project that was above his skills. Focus remained on the church. Platforms needed to be built in order to reach the top levels so they could secure the roof and also the various other types of designs that they wish to add to the church itself. Eventually what would happen is a bit of normalcy would appear in the form of a merchant that would come by and wanting to sell wares from a local village nearby. This was a blessing in a lot of ways. It raised the spirits as this had been seen as a sign that things were going back to normal. Baldrick would eventually finish the stairs leading into the cellar. And so he took the plans that Stephen gave him for the design of what the cellar would eventually look like and he began to plan out where to dig. He found the softest spots of earth that would be easily be broken down by his shovel and pick. And hopefully Sabine or Joanna would eventually help them or maybe even Stephen. But that was far into the future. Now they needed to rest for tomorrow would be another day. Just the day was progressing very smoothly. The church was nearly completed. There came a rustling in the forest. Fearing the worst, Sabine ran back towards the village to alarm everyone as to what was going on. As they all gathered in the town center, trying to plan out what to do, a traveler, wearing a small pack on his back, small bruises and cuts on his body, was seeking shelter.
And so it was settled. Sigmund would become the newest member of the town of Nertopia. Stephen was more than happy to have a new set of hands and, of course, a fresh, strong back. But Joanna wasn't so easily convinced. She wasn't all that trusting, and who could blame her? But she couldn't deny that they needed extra help. And hopefully, the Sigmund person would move on as soon as he got his fill. The town's church had finally been constructed. The remaining pillars, supports, and struts were being torn down and being saved for other projects or possibly fuel. Each one of them patted themselves on the back, Stephen especially, who was very proud of his new creation. Trees were beginning to be replanted, crops were starting to flourish. This was almost starting to feel like home. Stephen then began to design the shrines that would be placed within the church itself and give way to many a great hallowed meetings and communions with their God. Little did they know that this celebration would be short-lived, as that they were being watched in the woods by someone. 